This is the Garden of English. I'm Tim Freitas, and I am going to finally clarify what it means whenever you see a prompt in AP Wit that says the meaning of the work as a whole. So if you wanted to know what that means, you're going to want to pay attention. All right, we are back. The exam is quickly approaching for AP Lit, and I am here once again to talk about what it means when the prompt says the meaning of the work as a whole. Uh, but before I do, I want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon supporters over here at the Garden of English, uh, because we really appreciate what you are doing to support us. Um, and that's why we are able to continue to make this type of content. Uh, if you are interested in finding out what the benefits of becoming a supporter, a Patreon supporter for the Garden of English, um, what those benefits are, you can check that video out right up there. Okay, so what does it actually mean when the prompt says the meaning of the work as a whole? Uh, there are a couple ways to look at this. One of the ways to look at this is how does whatever the prompt is asking you to look at um, influence what goes on in the work? But we also want to recognize when it says the meaning of the work as a whole, the word meaning already implies abstraction. So it's not only how does whatever the prompt asks you to look at show up in the book and then influence other parts of the book. It's also discussing what most people call theme, but what I call universal insight. Okay. Uh, and there are also people that call it universal insight as well. I got that word from uh, John Williamson from a training that I was doing a few years ago. And um, John is just absolutely excellent. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to shrink up my screen here, and I'm going to talk about, okay, if the, meaning, if the meaning of the work as a whole has two parts, one of them being how does it influence the elements of the story, right? So let's say we have a prompt about betrayal. Um, how does that betrayal influence other characters' motivations and actions throughout the story? We, we can't just keep it in the text, though. We need to talk about the meaning of the work as a whole, which is going to, once again, mean theme. And this is often the hardest thing for my students to kind of grasp at the beginning of the year, uh, but it's really not that hard to teach, um, and it's not that hard to work with uh, if you have the right steps. So I've got three steps here that you can use to help generate theme, okay? Um, and I'm going to give you these three steps. I'm going to use Frankenstein, um, the novel Frankenstein, as my example. Now, um, with that being said, I'd also like to point out that, you know, one of the ways that you want to start reconceptualizing how you think about things is, like, if, if I were to ask you what your favorite movie was and then say, what's it about, you'd probably start telling me the plot. I don't want you to do that anymore. I want you to start telling me um, exactly what step one asks us for, and that's this right here. Step one says, brainstorm the ideas on which the work focuses and make sure that these are singular abstractions. Um, what that means is I'm looking for the ideas that we're trying to hang on to. Um, so I often think about, like, uh, I love the movie Big Hero 6, and if I were to ask my 10-year-old, what's Big Hero 6 about, he'd be like, it's about a robot and some brothers, and, the, you know, one of the brothers dies, and the robot um, develops a relationship with this really smart brother, and, you know, he'd go down the whole thing, and I'd be like, no, no, that's not what I meant. When I said I wanted to know what it's about, I wanted to know that it's about family. I wanted to know that it's about sacrifice. I wanted to know that there are parts of it that are even about revenge. I want, um, I want to know that it's about motivation. All of those are singular abstractions. And so if you pick a book for your question three on your AP Lit exam or any exam that asks you to talk about the meaning of the work as a whole, right? When you pick a book and you're given, let's say, betrayal in the prompt or, um, you know, how does setting influence characters and contribute to the meaning of the work as a whole, we want to get to that idea moment there. So when you want to study for your AP Lit exam, one of the best things for you to do is to actually take the longer works that you've read and just write out a list of like five to ten ideas that a lot of the action in that book focuses and centers on. Uh, because that's going to make things way easier to get a thematic statement into your thesis. And honestly, at the end of your thesis, you do want some sort of, some sort of thematic statement. And if you uh, need more information about that, you can check out this little playlist up here that I did about writing your question three. And it goes all the way from breaking down the prompt into writing the thesis, body paragraphs, conclusions, the whole works. And it also reiterates this as well. This is just the short version. So step one, you pick your work, you find ideas on which the work focuses. So for me, my example is Frankenstein. Frankenstein looks into isolation, over-industrialization, knowledge, revenge. And there are a bunch of other ideas that the action in Frankenstein focuses on, but these are the ones that I wanted to choose. Okay, so now what do I do? I found my idea. How do I actually put this into a thematic statement? Okay, because this is what the meaning of the work as a whole 
actually means. This is what it's driving you towards. Well, I have a template here for you uh, that you can fill in, and it works perfectly. The only thing that you want to make sure of is that you do not put the word you in here, okay? If I were talking about the story of the little boy who cried wolf, I would not say that, you know, the, the theme is you shouldn't lie. I'd want the word dishonesty to come first. It's about dishonesty, and then what do I learn about dishonesty there? Well, here's our template. You put the author's last name, so-and-so writes, you put the title in order to illustrate that, and then you put an idea word here. You want an idea here instead of the word you or instead of the word individuals because now we know that we're focusing on the meaning of the work. It's very easy to tag this thematic statement onto the end of a really good thesis. And once again, I encourage you to check out my playlist for question three up in the corner if you want to know more about doing that. Okay. But this right here is just about developing and understanding what the meaning of the work as a whole is. You've got this template. You put the idea word here. And then right after that, you follow that with what the author is seemingly suggesting or implying about that idea that is universally true for most, if not all, people, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that it is true. It just means that the author is suggesting that this is potentially true uh, or is true for most, if not all, people. And so I've got two examples of this down here, uh, but you're going to notice I've got some things highlighted in yellow and some in green, and I'll explain why as we read those. You'll notice my first one is, is that Frank, uh, Shelley writes Frankenstein in order to illustrate that revenge often begets greater tragedies rather than providing solace. And that just means comfort, by the way. Um, and you'll notice that I've got my idea, revenge. But the two green words are also ideas as well. So most of the time when you write some sort of thematic insight or universal insight, you're going to have an initial idea that you're focusing on like revenge but it will connect to other ones. And that's why it's important at the beginning of thinking about this that you list out five to ten ideas that the, that the work itself uh, relates to because you're going to be able to correlate some of those. And if I saw revenge, tragedy, and comfort or a lack of comfort on my list, I could be like, oh, my word, this is how this fits together if I follow the narrative of the story. Boom, there you have it, okay? So let's look at my second one here. It says Shelley writes Frankenstein in order to illustrate that knowledge in the obsessive pursuit of acquiring more has the potential to instigate moral decline. And you know what? I actually should have um, highlighted this as well in green. But notice that we're focusing on knowledge here, but what are the other universal ideas that I've connected it to into this statement and this message? Obsession and moral decline. And so there you have it. And the last thing that you need to do is that once you find these thematic statements or these universal insights, you just have to summarize some elements of the book that prove that to be true, and there's your evidence. So you've got your, hey, here's what's going on in the story, and then when I provide my commentary, I explain how it shows or how this, comment, uh, how this evidence actually works to expose these universal truths. And there I've got my essay. So, I mean, that's really the quickest way to do it. Um, and that's what the meaning of the work as a whole actually entails. Uh, if this video is helpful, I'm going to ask that you click like and subscribe down at the bottom. That's the easiest way that you can help out the Garden of English. We are active on Facebook and on Instagram, so you can give us a like over there. We also sell merch um, and uh, stickers and t-shirts and things like that and posters. Um, you can find that on our website. Um, I always try to link it up here in the corner, but it never actually works out in the card. I don't know why. Um, and uh, please note, we also have a bunch of affiliate links right down um, in our description there as well. So you can uh, check out some of the partners that we have down there. I appreciate your time. The test is coming up very soon. So um, I encourage you to actually get some study in. One of the best ways to do so is to pick some of those novels that you've read and actually list out five to 10 ideas so that they're fresh in your mind. So you can pick out the perfect book to answer your open-ended question or now known as the literary argument or the question three on your wit exam. And uh, I hope you all have a great one.